I'm Brandon Sewell, owner of Seal Pro Painting and the host of the Off the Ladder podcast. Um, we exist to help home service business owners learn so that they can lead well and ultimately live life off of the ladder. I'm excited about today's episode. I have a guest, Shane Woods. Um, he is the founder of the Fine Finish Institute. Um, if you're in the painting industry, you probably know of Shane and have seen him around online, um, social media, Facebook groups. Um, he's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to fine finishing. Um, so the reason why we have uh, Shane on here today is to really talk about the nuances of fine finishing and how it differs from, let's just say, your standard repaint service on a home. Um, so without further ado, welcome to the show, Shane. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it, brother, man. And I've, I've really enjoyed your podcast, and um, I, was, I was happy to be able to, to jump on here. Yeah, I really appreciate that, man. Um, it, I've I've uh, looked at you from afar, like I've seen your uh, stuff, like I said, on different Facebook groups and um, have followed you for a while. Um, I have a lot of respect for you and what you do and just the um, craftsmanship that you have. And, um, you know, I was explaining um, before the show, and I'll let the listeners in on this. Um, I was explaining to Shane, we as a company used to offer cabinet painting services. Now, um, it was something that we pretty heavily like promoted and marketed. Um, and then I really started to uh, tune in to Shane's content and learn about the the fine finishing. And um, what I quickly realized is that the things that I was promising to customers as far as like the level of um, quality that we were going to offer for people's cabinets, it, it just, it wasn't what it was, uh, you know, made out to be, right? And even with the best of intentions, you know, I just didn't realize um, the level <laughs> that, you know, you guys go to on the fine finishing side to produce um, you know, these beautiful cabinets and finishes. So um, we actually stopped um, offering cabinet painting services. And I started to refer them out to a guy uh, here locally who does an amazing job on cabinets. Um, he owns a company. Can you give him a shout out real quick? Uh, who is that? Yeah, his name is Chris Duff uh, Chris Dufferson. I think that's the way you say his uh, name. Chris uh, Christopher? Chris Christopher? Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Um, he's, he's uh, that runs the cabinet painting group. Uh, Chris he, I'm not sure. He I know he owns a company called Color Works Painting yeah. yep. um, in Orlando or Winter Garden yeah. area. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, he does phenomenal okay, work. Okay. His, his dad was, um, you know, in the industry for a long time. He comes from that background of, like, fine finishing. And, you know, so I uh, quickly noticed the level of finishing that he offered. And yeah. I was like, man, I just... Um, in good conscience, you know, I couldn't continue to offer that service knowing that we couldn't deliver. And, you know, as I explained to you, Shane, like I'm a Christian man, you know, I believe in having integrity and I think we're accountable for what we know. And, um, you know, it, it's like, you know, the Bible says if you know what to do, right, and you choose not to do that, um, it's sin, right? So, um, I know that might sound, uh, you know, just kind of crazy or cliche, but I was just like, man, I can't, um, I can in good conscience and with integrity offer this service knowing that it's, it's not, you know, what, um, what it should be for the customer and not just, you know, we still do cabinet painting jobs occasionally, but I'm very clear about the expectation with the customer. I'm like, look, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to prep the cabinets. This is how we're going to apply the product. Here's the products we're going to use. And this is what you can expect with this system. Now, if you're looking for your cabinets to be like, look like they came out of a factory, like you can see your face in them, like absolutely beautiful, uh, beautiful, gorgeous finish. We're not the guys for you, <laughs> you know, and just being very, um, clearing up front about that, especially when we're looking at like multi million dollar homes, right? Sure. sure. Like, you know, these play these homes, like some of these homes we work in that are, you know, million dollar plus homes. Um, I don't want to go in there and 
offer like what we're providing and you know them not get the uh could you quality tell me, they're looking for could you tell me on what avenues do you think like i want to hear more what you're saying you know what i'm saying do you can you describe like what the shortcomings were like for instance was it the uh the level of final finish that you could see was it the durability was it the products was it bleed through yeah. was it worrying about contaminants tell me a little bit about what what scared you from wanting to just attack it and, and master it it was kind of all of those things you know you you uh obviously it's like taking on a whole nother beast right yep. to thinking like room. okay you know uh, now if i wanted to offer that level of finish well now i've got to train my employees okay. and that's a whole nother beast like uh, okay. the time the commitment um, and, and so I think there was a big learning curve there, but yes, it was, um, the prep that was needed knowledge of the substrate and like how it needs to be prepped and, you know, just little nuances of, you know, how to accomplish that end finish based mm -hmm. off of like, okay, this is the substrate we're dealing with. Right. Um, you know, contamination, um, you know, the, um, yes, products, products that we would use application, you know, mm -hmm. uh, airless sprayer versus HVLP, the um, containment, you know, so, you know, sure. I've seen guys who do the fine finishing, you know, they, they come in and they'll completely um, contain the space. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then they're also not only that, they're creating like an exhaust system, right? So, mm -hmm. so to, to pull all of the dust and, you know, whatever other contaminants could get into the finish out um right. you know obviously some of like you know uh, that has to do with the spraying as well but um yeah so just not really having a good grasp on all of that um okay. was like man i you know and then coming down to yeah ultimately that the the final finish you know and the durability um plays into it, it you know as well um okay. so so in other words uh, when you w when you you got a job you you put your your guys on it and it got done and you were just kind of like hold on a second i think my specialty with my company and where i want to go with the guys that i have it's better to 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 either a invest all the way in the training or b just stay in the lane where your company is is familiar and you know that you're not going to be getting callbacks and you're not going to have exactly these so, so as a business decision, as much as you wanted to to do beautiful finishes, you knew that to to really keep the machine rolling, uh, that that you wanted to stay where where you were already tried and tested at. That I give you hats off respect to that. That's that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah and I mean, ultimately, I'd love to do it eventually. But I have some, uh, like for me, um, I'd love to eventually do fine finishing and offer that as a service. But I have. Um, there's basically two requirements that I have for myself, you know, in the back of my mind. One is that I have to have properly trained employees. So they know, and, and to be honest with you, like I come from a background, I worked for a painting company, um, up in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm located in Florida now, but I came from a background of sales and marketing. That's okay. how I got into the painting industry, right? So, and now I own my own business. I'm great with like building a brand and selling and marketing and like managing the production. But I like when I hire on my guys, I tell them like, hey, look, you're my consultant, right? In the painting side of it, right? So I expect, you know, like my leads to have, you know, the experience, the expertise and for them to be able to train people who are under them. I'm not trying to be like the one who knows everything about painting and finishing, but if I was going to do fine finishing, I would want to be able to invest in training my employees to do it right and to pr provide, you know, exceptional quality and workmanship. Um, and then also um, to have a, uh, an actual shop. Right. So right now we just op my business operates out of an office, you know, like a suite. Um, sure. We have two We have here and behind me. Um, but if I was going to, basement. we Delaware don't have, a, yeah, we don't. And that's what I'm saying. So like, 
um, any of our extra um, equipment, material, supplies uh, we have in a trailer, enclosed trailer. Um, yeah. So um, I don't, you know, and then I've got, you know, trucks, vans that my guys work out of, but um, we don't have a warehouse like what you're in, right? An industrial space where we could really um, create like a, a spray booth, you know, and um, I just feel like for us to be able to um, offer the level of craftsmanship that I would want to, that's something that we would need, right? A, a dedicated yeah. space where we can take people's doors, cab uh, drawers and all of that and spray them in a controlled environment um versus using the client's garage or their breakfast yes area so. yes exactly because i just i don't feel like for me personally i don't feel like that's um necessarily the most professional um service right and right. um i feel like especially with those high-end customers who expect the level of finish you know that we're talking about their expectation is probably going to be these need to be taken off site, not sprayed in my garage or, you know, in a pop up booth or something in my driveway or whatever. Um, sure. So those are some personal decisions that I have. But let's talk about um, let's say there's there's guys out there who are listening to this and maybe they have this like self awareness of, hey, you know, um, I'm not delivering on the quality that I could. Um, I, I want to get better. I want to be able to offer, um, you know, the kind of quality that, that you're producing. Um, what kind of, um, you know, resources do you have for those guys? And um, what, what kind of things are you offering to help train guys who want to get better at fine finishing? Sure. Well, Brandon, to, to, to begin with, I'd like to kind of compare – you know, my history with, and it kind of brings to how I got to here, um, sure. painted my first car at 14. My dad was a, a do it all, you know, guy. And I fell in love with it. We painted a Honda civic mint green with pink, uh, heartbeats on the side. So that should tell you what oh, nice. time of the night <laughs> it was, um, fell in love with it. So in high school that my, my high school offered an auto paint and body class, like a technical class. Fell in love with it. it. Was basically my whole world. I only got up in the morning to go work at Auto Paint and Body, and you know to see these. I wanted to paint race cars, um, and so I, I, of course I jumped right into the spray booth to the spray hand and just messed multiple things up. I like completely tore them up and uh, went to work at a body shop close to where I lived. And um, when I walked in there, he said, "You want to be a painter?" And I was like, "Yes, sir. I want to paint race cars." He was like, well, the first thing you got to do is wash my truck. And it just, it upset me. But I went out there and I washed the <laughs> truck and, I came back and I'm like, okay, I'm done. He walked out there and he picked 58 different things that I didn't see. So I got back at it and then mm -hmm. it became, I'm going to show him that I can really do it. And, it. and it opened up a whole nother level of awareness for me as a young kid, um, which helped me detail a car, it helped me vacuum a rug, it helped me clean a window, you know what I'm saying? It, it really helped everything come into focus about uh, cleanliness and 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 uh, when you when you're in the automotive world and you put that high gloss clear on there, that's the moment that you can tell if you did a good job or not. And mm -hmm. that stuff's expensive; it's hard to mix up. It takes a long time to get ready for that step. So the whole time that you're working, you're you're beginning with the end in mind. Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Great book, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, so you, you're always beginning with what's it going to look like with that clear on it. So you have to get things straight. And uh, it took a long time to really understand, you know, the science behind making an automotive finish look right. Um, sure. Then at 18, um, I went through a, a major uh, awakening. The Lord came in my life and just completely... Uh, just took over, just just completely took over. Called me to the ministry at nineteen, um, and I I uh, I I'd moved from where I was at to the church. Went lived in the dorms and stuff. It was amazing. Uh, but there was a guy there that painted houses, and uh, he was one of those old Union, old school whites with a five and one and a duster brush, or you go home kind of guys. Uh, <laughs> and I went to boot camp for about six months. I puttied baseboards and dusted and cleaned. I didn't get to paint again. And I was the painter, mm -hmm. you know, so um, 
it was those two men that that brought me back and and put a foundation of apprenticeship in me um how to keep a job site clean how to keep tools in order how to keep things rolled up and with that that foundation it was able i was able to really just kind of excel in all types of remodeling areas but uh i mixed the automotive with the residential you know those were those were things where uh i knew that you know i could get on a crew and i could stay in the you know the spray area or the 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 mantles the cabinets or whatever was was you know challenging um and then when uh i took about an eight year hiatus um went through some things but when i got back into painting again at around 40 uh there was this big craze going on about cabinets you know everybody wanted their stained cabinets painted and it was just seemed like everybody in the country was getting asked to paint cabinets um so of course i jumped on a crew in st louis and they handed me the primer they handed me the top coat I did what they asked. And then when we got done, I could just scratch it off with my finger. And I was like, man, this stuff is just taking too long to dry. It's gummy. It's rubbery. Uh, so I started looking into furniture finishes and furniture factories. And then I came across Yanni Fakaris and he was using Malaysia. Um, And then I came across some other people who were using industrial wood coatings. Uh, I met Louis Hasso and he took me to meet all of these uh, companies that didn't want to have anything to do with us bucket and brush guys. They wanted to deal with the big factories. They wanted to dra drop a semi truck load off and then leave. They didn't have to train anybody. So mm -hmm. Lewis said that um, he talked to these big distributors and these manufacturers and said that he could help with the service training part if they would allow him to 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 give this out. And that was about I think six or seven years ago. And since then, it has just it just taken over so um I, I knew what i had struggled with um as far as getting a finish to last a long time so i knew that in the automotive world you know we had industrial coatings that you add catalyst to and they performed a whole lot different so when i found those for wood it it was over for me and i was able to to, to fall back on all those years of automotive you know two component products and and mixing things out and spraying you know, in that area. Um, and so everybody would ask me, I would just post, I would post a picture of a, a job I got done and they'd be like, man, how did you do that? And it's like, well, it's easier for me just to post a live video than to tell you. So I would just hit live and I do my thing and then I'd hit share. And that's been pretty much all the editing that I've done. Uh, but I would paint cabinets and work in ministry and, and somebody would call me and say, Hey, can you, can you train me? And I'd be like, sure. So February 2019, we trained Corey Leister, uh, about three or four other people had came to St. Louis, and uh, that's when we created the Fine Finish Institute. So I realized that I could take all of these things that I had learned over the last 30 years, uh, which, by the way, are all based upon feelings. You know what I'm saying? So it just it feels right. It feels smooth. It feels like enough pressure. It feels straight. And it's hard to articulate all of those words or feelings into words uh, so that other people could understand it. So I got, I got, I started getting good at that. It was the hardest thing I'd ever done, but I, I had so much intrinsic value when someone would leave and, and, and then post pictures of their wins or, or they'd say how thankful they were to get shown uh, this stuff. And it just, it created, I knew that with, with my calling that that was going to be something that the Lord used uh, as an excuse to give me a platform to be able to share the good news of what he'd done in my life. And, um, you know, we, we really try hard to help, um, to help guys get past that, um, that place of feeling like they're, they're, um, they have a liability instead of an asset. So like when you, when right. you saw a cat and a customer, you didn't just see the check at the end of the job. You saw the responsibility to make sure that that finish lasted as long as you would say it would. So if somebody says, I want a cabinet job that's going to last forever, you knew that that was kind of out of your scope. Uh, but that's a horrible feeling to to not be able to say no to. And a lot of contractors, you know, we're, 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 we're living hand to mouth. We're living job to job. And those leads are very important to us. We pet them and we'll be, you know, we'll we'll name them and we'll water them and we'll take good care of them because they don't come so often. So they're taking what they can get 
and uh, then getting into a big, you know, a big fix when, when something happens and it doesn't take long for you to get a couple of bad jobs before you're done, you know? So mm -hmm. I res I respect your take more than ever because you, you realize that, um, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of variables and a whole lot of factors that could come out real bad. And to you that translates in lost profit, which can't, can't happen. You know, your responsibility is to make sure this business is profitable. And so we started coming up with little scenarios and drills and little things to help. And then every time I would go back and work on one of my projects, I would start thinking that I was explaining all of this. And about a year ago, I was uh, talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, it seems like my, my customers are getting so much better. Uh, my, my students are getting so much easier. And he, he said, no, that's because you're becoming a better instructor. So it, it just, started, yeah, it started really just, I, I was able to, bring people in and see how their brain worked and watch how their mind worked and, and be able to explain to them how to get a finish. And there's always that aha moment where it's like, I got it, you know, and I did that. And it's uh, teaching guys why and how that happens is, is uh, it's really rewarding. But to, to answer your question, we started the fine finish Institute 2019, but we came to Houston uh, last year and uh, basically just all in, for the training. So we offer um, a two day and a three day training that happens here. Uh, and it's intense. It's a full two days. And we start with um, three different raw MDF doors and then a refinished door. And we just take the whole two days and we go through every single step. Um, also, we have spray sessions where we use the, the two quart pressure pot and we go over all the doors. We spray them a couple different times and we work on uh, technique and adjusting the gun. Um, a lot of what I spend time doing in my training is tr changing guys from an airless mentality to an HVO mentality, which is, a, I think that's the hardest thing to break guys that have been spraying with an airless for a long time and have to mm -hmm. reel it back in and, and, and just show them, um, you know, how to get a good finish with an HVOP. Uh, is that... Is that did that answer that question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll 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 uh, I'll dig a little bit deeper and ask you some follow up questions. So, um, okay. let's kind of touch on like you know with your knowledge of the finishes. You know, I think uh, for me, like some of the most common uh, products that I see guys using, um, you know, and like what I was using that I just felt like wasn't the best would be like emerald urethane enamel from sharon williams or like let's say their new gallery series or some different like ben moore products you know being applied with an airless sprayer um can you go into like the for the person who's listening to this maybe there's like a guy listening to this he's um you know just started his, his business he's thinking about adding you know cabinet painting as a service um wondering like oh man what products i use and maybe in his mind he's thinking like, I'm going to offer a Shane Woods level finish using these products. Can you just jump into the reason why they're different? Um, you know, why one doesn't perform as well as the other and, and, and just really kind of dig into like, um, the difference Science. between those. Yeah. Yeah. If you could. Um, well, I, I think it's like anything else as a consumer. I think we've been conditioned to uh, want easy, fast, immediate. Um, and so having the big box store on every corner uh, for 100 years as contractors, we get a call on Sunday. Hey, I want you to start tomorrow. Go ahead. You pick up a check. You run to Sherwin Williams. You pick up the paint. Monday evening, Tuesday morning, you're in it, right? Uh, that's how the 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 you know, the, the cog moves for all of us. Right. So to th that, uh, I'm going to have to outsource my material from a, a distributor that's maybe not in my city, not in my state. Um, you know, that we lose a lot of control there. Um, sure. but the big box stores, they have, uh, they have products that are designed for consumers to be able to open the can and pretty much use, uh, anybody can use it and get, you know, good, decent results. And, uh, you know, there's a time and a place for every coating. Don't get me wrong, but the amount of quality control, uh, the amount, uh, I mean, everything that's in these products, you know, down to the types of resins, the types of solids, the pigments, 
all that stuff is formulated uh, to be, um, you know, a, a specialty coating. Now, where you, when you buy these coatings, you're you have to have an account. You have to be somebody that, um, you know, they they won't just sell to homeowners, you know, because these coatings are uh, a little bit more. They can be more dangerous. They could be more, um, you know, health um, have negative health contents or, uh, you know, effects to them. They're, they're just, they're just not, they don't have pictures or directions on the side of the can. Uh, a mm -hmm. lot of them are just numbers, um, you know, and, and to, to really just think, okay, I don't have anybody to, to walk me through this. Um, where do I order this? What do I use first? You know, and all that stuff. It, it's hard, but uh, the, the quality of these coatings, the dry time, uh, the adhesion, the coverage, sandability, uh, just the, as far as uh, the end results, they do extensive levels of testing on these coatings to get them to perform uh, at the highest level. So uh, they do constant research and development to to make these coatings, you know, perform at, at the highest level, which that too, it's like anything, even if you have like a high performance drone, they're going to be harder to learn. Uh, you know, you got a high performance rifle with a scope, it's going to be a lot harder to learn. But it's a specialty uh, tool that that really helps us, you know, deliver a job that will last for a long time. Um, they have uh, my friends that I learned from are the guys in the white coats at the laboratories. They uh, they've they've been doing this a long time, and I think the Italians um, or that Italian technology is about twenty years ahead as far as. Um, like the science behind water-based coatings, um, mm -hmm. they they're just they're just very you know they're they're very far ahead. They're also very expensive as well. So there's like I was saying, as a consumer, there's a lot of reasons why I don't want to switch to these products. Um, but I I do think that uh, if somebody is going to be you know doing furniture or cabinets and they're using stuff from the big box stores, they're they're probably going to have you know, some trouble before it's all over with. Now, Nick Slavic does bring a good point that it 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 it, it all depends on the level of prep uh, and the execution. You can make pretty much anything work, uh, but to be able to to really offer something that 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 seventy other painters in my area are using to be able to separate myself from that crowd uh, and find those customers that that have seen the nightmare of the cabinets flaking off and the peels and stuff like that. Those are who I market to. Those are my customers that appreciate uh, the difference. And that's one of the things that I teach in the beginning is how to differentiate yourself from all the other folks that are in your area uh, as a finisher. And we've come up with a system that I call the hyperbond system. It's not a proprietary secret of what, you know, recipe to use, it's the level of excellence that goes into each layer. So one of the most important things in my world is adhesion. Adhesion is the most important thing to me uh, when producing a, a finished product. If it doesn't stick to what I put it on, then we're going to have, you know, catastrophic coating failure. Um, so being able to make sure that each layer that we apply is going to bond to the one before will give us a strong chain and something that'll last a long time. Um, I give a lifetime warranty against coating failure. And then in my contract, I do define what coating failure is and, you know, how we can keep that from happening. So um, did, did I ramble on again? Is that, is that good? Did no, I no, that's, that? that's good. No, I mean, I think it's just, I think there's some, you know, cause that was me at some point is like, I didn't, before I heard of you and I heard of um, some other guys who were doing fine finishing I didn't really understand the the difference, right? I I thought that I could just use emerald urethane enamel and still produce the same result. Sure. And I think what really caused me to like dive into it is, you know, I would have customers ask me like, "Hey, you know, is this going to to chip or peel in, you know, a year? Um, right. Am I going to have issues with it? Um, you and know, flaking off." My answer initially was no, right? Okay. Because I right. didn't know, I didn't know better. Right. But right. then 
as I started, I started running into like uh, customers like you mentioned where they maybe they had cabinet painting done before and they talked mm -hmm. about how dissatisfied with it. Like, oh, we had a company before that painted and, you know, they used the same thing that you're talking about and it and it peeled. And they would ask me, what are you going to do differently to ensure a different result? And I'm like, Ugh, I, I don't know. Cross my fingers. <laughs> um, yeah, right. Like just pray, pray that it, it works. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and so that really sent me down this like trail of like, you know, like I said, for me, my word is like means so much to me. So like when I go in and I talk to a customer, um, I really want to feel deep down that like what I'm saying is is truthful it's factual and and i'm going to be able to deliver on the results that i'm saying right so and brandon um, your customers can pick that up in their discernment too they can sure pick sure they pick that up keep going That's yeah good. yeah but um you know so just as i became like more aware of you know the differences i was like i'm gonna start looking into this and you know so that's when i started watching your videos and i started you know, looking at some other things on like Facebook mostly and YouTube. And I was like, man, like we can't with this system and what we do, we can't solve that customer's problem. You know, that customer who comes to us and says, hey, we had this done before, but it wasn't what we were looking for. We want this result. And I was like, well, I can't I can't achieve that result based on what I know. And as I became more aware of that and I be and you know, I started meeting more of those customers who were dissatisfied with that service before. Um, I was like, I can't give them this impression that we can achieve that. And so I was like, that's when I started referring those cabinet jobs to um I have a problem saying his name. It's Chris Christopher Michael. He is a Christopher. Very yeah, yeah Christopher. Chris, yeah, that's not his. That's not his real name. That's his name that he uses on Facebook. I I, I think oh, his name okay. is Chris. Uh, but he well, actually sells Malaysia down there where you're at. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I know yeah. he does. You know, I know he does incredible work. I've seen it. Yeah, I, you know, I great. see the jobs he does. He he does a good job. So yeah, that's when I started. Um, you know, referring jobs to him. And 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 like I said, I'm not saying we don't do you know, a cabinet painting job here or there, but I'm very um, intentional about telling the customer, hey, if this is the level of finish you're looking for, great, we can do it. But if you want this level, we're not the company for you. And so like we're, we're actually painting the inside of a customer's home right now. And today, we started today and he asked me, he said, do you guys do cabinet painting too? I said, no, we're, we don't. <laughs> and I referred him to, uh, I'm just going to call him Chris, I referred him to Chris. And I said, look, I completely understand if you end up using Chris for the entire job, like they offer interior painting as well. And this customer appreciated my honesty so much that he hired Chris to do the cabinets and he still let us do the interior painting. And, um, That's you know, so, so I just, um, anyway, you know, based on what you were saying, I think, uh, it, it's really good. I think this, this information, um, needs to get out to more people. Um, I, I don't think so. I think some people aren't aware of the differences and not only that, I think that, you know, for me, I have a saying in my company, I say people over profits, you know, I say it to my employees, I say it, you know, to customers, um, you know, I, I just have that as like a principle for myself that people are more important than, than profits. And so um, I don't want to, I can't in, in just my good conscience offer something to a customer just because it's going to make me money, knowing that it's not what they expect right so because i you think you don't have to come back and fix it because you're you're gonna yeah say, they have a problem you're going to be there to fix it uh, right and, and if you have integrity you will fix it but i think another problem that we have in the contracting space is there's guys who won't you know there's guys who will look at that as like oh this is an opportunity for me to make another you know whatever you know two yeah. three thousand bucks plus 
and I, oh, well, if it's not exactly the finish they're looking for, I can at least get in there. It, it looks good enough to get by. And then if they have issues, I'm just going to ghost them. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. they got their check, they got their money and and that's not their problem now. And that's not how I operate, but I, I just, man, I, I just cringe at the thought that there's guys out there who can, uh, in good conscience do that. Right. Let's pray um, for all those guys right now because they, right. <laughs> you know, that they've been seared. Uh, their conscience has been seared. Anybody that's got any type of of integrity to them will lose sleep over that. And so I, I I commend you for that. And don't understand, you know, how people can be any other way. I mean, in in the finishing world, there's a whole lot of steps that happen before the final coat. And we can jump straight to the final coat to get the check. But if we're not really, you know, again, beginning with the end in mind, we're going to have loose um, kinks in our armor, you know, places where we'll be vulnerable to to that type of stuff. So yeah. hats off to you. I commend you for that. For sure. I appreciate that. You know, and I think um, it's unfortunate, but I think there's just there's homeowners, too, that, you know, I think we have a responsibility to educate homeowners like right and like advocate for them um in the process of getting this the work done right so um they don't know what they don't know and right. so once once we're once we have that knowledge and we have that understanding i think it's important for us um you know to educate those customers um right. and you know you know i think with cabinet painting you know, it's diff. Like I think, you know, you're talking about automotive finishing. I think it's easier for a customer to understand. Like, okay, obviously, a car takes a different process to paint it, right? I think that's a pretty like given thing. Cabinet painting, I don't think so much. I think there's a little bit more of a gap in the understanding that a customer or consumer is going to have. I mean, right. um, like for me. As someone who owns a painting company, I even me, I understand there's a different process that would have to take place to paint a vehicle, right? Right. Um, but I didn't necessarily have that knowledge before when it came to cabinets, mm -hmm. right? So I think consumers have that same issue where they don't realize like, you know, in order to get this level of finish, there's a different process to it. And right. um so I think it's important for us to advocate for them. And, um, you know, it's just completely different. But um, talk about this a little bit, because it's something that I'm interested in hearing more about and um, kind of uh, the importance of it. When when you're going in and you're doing a, a fine finish on cabinets, um, can you talk about, we've talked about coatings, right? There's a difference in the coatings. Um, can you go into more detail about the the prep and the environment, right? So um, I think we either before the show or during it, we talked about, um, you know, I saw that there, as I was doing more research, I saw there were companies who were completely containing the space using like an exhaust system. Can you talk about the reason why that's important um, and like why the environment that they're sprayed in, like how that plays into the finish? Absolutely. I do want to touch on one thing before I go any further. Yeah, if, yeah, absolutely. We're talking about a, a customer's perspective. I want to pull it out to uh, let's look at something else in our lives. So you've got a lot of folks that 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 go to the grocery store and they look at organic orange juice and then orange juice that's non-organic. And they think, oh, well, that one's $1.50 more. And they go straight for the non-organic, not even thinking about the levels of glyphosate or the genetically modified organism or something like that. It just doesn't come up on their radio because we aren't informed as consumers. Um, right. You know, I, I think after the great awakening that I went through um, almost eight years ago, I started understanding that um, you, you get what you give, you get what you pay for, you get what you put in. And so one of the most important things in my training uh, from the beginning of the time that I meet a craftsman until forever, I'm working on being able to help with the sales process. So differentiating and saying those buzzwords like automotive, um, you know, 
I automotive repair standard, different different things to to cross that over. Uh, because if you if you think about it, I mean, the customer that I have right now, um, the biggest concern was price. And whenever you are dealing with a customer that's biggest concern is budget, it's really hard to to get past that, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, what I do and what I teach my craftsmen to do is to spoon feed information. Um, as they see fit. So I won't give an estimate out until I know for sure that the customer understands what it is that I do. If it's not important, I get it. I don't spend $6,000 on anything in my life. I know what you're saying about spending that much money to refinish your cabinets. Uh, but what happens after that process is that the customer then will be an irresponsible consumer if they don't choose us and they choose someone else. So at least they know. So that's that's when you said that, that's number one. When my phone rings or somebody messages me, the first thing I'm going to do is is differentiate. Do you know what type of finishing I do? Do you understand the difference? And mm -hmm. if they don't, then I have wonderful content uh, on a landing page that I can send them. And as they can see fit, they can look at why. Uh, and I have key points along the whole refinishing process that show the difference and why I might be a little bit more in the end budget. One of those things, like you were saying, is the containment. Um, now, there's a couple of different way uh, levels of containment. Uh, you've got, depending on what product you're using, a lot of cust uh, contractors are using solvent-based lacquers, uh, bin primers, things that are really stinky. Um, and in, in that case, you don't want that getting out into the homeowner's, you know, area. So we use zip walls and, and containment uh, to just try to funnel that stuff outside. Um, me personally, I have an Apollo HVLP, which has 90% transfer efficiency, meaning what, that out of everything that comes out the gun, 90% stays on the surface. So very little overspray. Um, also, I'm using mostly water-based products, so there's not that solvent off-gassing. So with the system that we've come up with, um, the, the containment level is a lot less. So even though I might spend a few more minutes actually spraying because the HVOP isn't as productive as an airless, I can save a lot of time with how much I have to dexter, you know, the area, um, you know, and how much right. I can. Yeah, so, uh, and then each kitchen is different depending on how, how the home is oriented even depending on what time of the year it is and which way the winds are blowing, you've got to kind of get in there and evaluate, okay, I need air coming in here and I need air going out here. Usually we'll have the inlet air up high and the, the outlet air down low. And we have two axle fans with filters and duct work and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. These products, while they're wet, they contain isocyanates, uh, which is, is, is a harmful chemical that's shown to, to cause, um, adverse health reactions so you really don't want that you know getting out into the customer's area um i've also seen guys that using lacquer uh that changed the way the food tasted in the refrigerator you know what i'm saying so wow. the impact on the lives of the customers uh some don't care some will go get a hotel they don't care they just want it cheap but some of them are really going to pay attention to how you protect their counters how you protect their floors um, how you protect their toilet seat. I mean, all of that stuff is really important. Um, mm -hmm. you know, where we walk, where we leave, where we wash out, all of that stuff. And again, that all goes back to the beginning of my apprenticeship training, knowing how important it is to keep things organized and clean. And this stuff is, um, you know, is, at this high level, things can go bad real quick. And if you miss a step in the cleaning process or the masking process, and you get into these things, uh, you can create a, 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 a really big mess. I mean, it's not like once the stuff dries, you can just take it off with denatured alcohol. You know, I mean, it, it within an hour, it's going to be on there and it's it's not coming off. So we spend probably six to eight hours on each kitchen, masking the floor with roofing underlayment, countertops, you know, masking everything off. Um, you obviously don't want any dust or debris to blow into your finish. Um, so very little of my time is actually spent applying coatings. Most of my time is, is spent cleaning, honestly. <laughs> cleaning, <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and you can create little pitfalls for yourself the whole way that when the plastic comes out, you have to fix. Um, and I don't necessarily like doing that. So I'll spend all the time in the beginning, making sure that when I unroll everything, I'm done. Yeah.
Yeah. That's good. Um, so you touched on uh for a minute there on the difference between like the HVLP and um an airless sprayer. Can you can you just go a little bit deeper for those who are listening on why the application is different and you know kind of the nuances there of of what each does and the purpose they serve great question and and i'll just say in the beginning there is a correct tool for every job um but me and my finishing shop i have one machine my machine is an apollo hvlp but what i do a little bit different is i'll add a pressure pot a two quart or a one gallon or a two and a half gallon pressure pot and i'll tell you why i do that the beautiful thing about the airless is that you can hit prime you can hit charge you can put a tip on it adjust the pressure and you're making money you're going everything that you point that thing at's going to get painted it's kind of like a magic wand it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna <laughs> be done um sure. but the the problem is you've got a lot of material coming out um and and a lot of that material is 120 150 bucks a gallon uh it's going on the paper it's going on the floor it's going on all your masking stuff Everything is getting a coat of, of finish on it, you know, which is fine. But right. <laughs> end of the month, you know, when I look at adding two gallons to every project at $140 a gallon, what's even more expensive than $120 a gallon is running out of material and not having that $120 gallon and then having to reorder that second gallon. So I'm all the time worried about how much material did I throw away? How much did I lose? You know, uh, all of that stuff. So with the Apollo, I'm able to mix up 200 mLs uh, or 1100 mLs, and I can use all of that on the cabinets, not on my floor, mm -hmm. not on the ceiling, not in the air, uh, and I can really contain that. The, uh, the problem with the HVOP is that with a cup, you have to hold the weight of the cup. Also, anytime you have a cup gun, obviously the, the production is going to be a little bit less, even though the finish will be quote unquote finer, you're, you're, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be there a long time and you're going to get tired and you're going to have to refill your cup all the time. So by putting a two quart pressure pot on there, I don't have to hold the weight of the cup and I get the added production of having my material force fed to my gun and then coming out pressurized instead of using the HVOP atomization air to move that material up or down or out. So you're, you're actually able to use all of your turbine air to create a beautiful pattern, and then you're able to force that material up there. That's probably one of the most uh, beneficial tools that I teach is the two-quart pressure pot. Um, I did a job uh, last night, and I haven't got my big boost set up, but you can see right there, that was the whole... Can you see that, Brandon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that, that's all the overspray that I got for all of these doors. Wow. And mixed up 1,100 mLs. So I put this much in there and used it all. How far would wow. that get you with an airless? Even with a T3 with a hopper, <laughs> how far is that going to get you? You know? Right. So, um, you know, it. If I didn't have the pressure pot, I'd have a, a, a Tritec in here with a hopper and a, and a 308, and I, I would just have to mix up that little bit for the 25-foot hose, and I'd throw it away. If I were doing, let's say, a full kitchen, and they were all raw, excuse me, I would probably want to get done a little faster with an airless, but I'd have to buy more material, and I'd have to prep the area. Uh, I won't even let nobody use the airless in my shop. It just makes a huge mess, you know? Sure. It really does. And if you look at people's shoes, you can tell yeah. what they're spraying because they're, you know, all the cabinet refinishers in the groups are like, post your shoes. And they're all like, you know, just completely smoked out. Mine's got a couple dots on it, you know. So I, I also, uh, when I'm teaching gun techniques, um, the angle that we use and how we bounce material off, uh, all of that stuff is really important. So understanding it what's coming out of your gun is pretty much invisible right you can't really see it but you can see the effects of it and everybody seems to watch the part turn change colors but nobody seems to watch how much material is actually ending up on the surface so it's it's kind of like being able to focus your attention on what's happening as the coating is hitting the part 
uh, and then giving them complete control with that HVLP to be able to put all the material where they want it. Uh, it, it takes a couple of days, but usually by the end of the job, it's like, I don't know why I wasn't ever always using that. Um, problem with HVLP is I would say it's probably comparable to a sniper rifle or uh, if I was in the SEALs and I had a Glock you know, 23 on there, that thing would be in perfect operating you know, at all times. It'd be oiled and clean and put together and adjusted because my life depends on it. Mm -hmm. um, in this shop, my production and my profitability depends on how clean I keep my machines and how clean I keep my guns. So that's a very, very high priority. Anybody that doesn't really like to clean guns or that's one of those guys who just shoot it and throw it in the truck, they'll have a lot of problems with the Apollo because it is a, a high-performance specialty tool um, that once you've mastered it and you learn how to work it, it's fantastic. A lot of guys won't ever go back to it. Um, but for me, I also want to be able to mix up a little bit or a lot and not have to reinvent the wheel every time I start a project. I see these guys that have a... Uh, I bet it's a tool addiction. It seems like they're spraying with a different gun every week. <laughs> and then pictures sure. of a whole table laid out with all these different guns and stuff. And I look over at my one gun and I'm like, wow, I'm just, you know, I'm thankful for that. But again, there's lots of different levels. I mean, if you have a, a high production shop and you're using just, you know, more production type situation, uh, there's there's nothing like an Eros. But for in someone's home, uh, in my shop, painting a cabinet door, I mean, if you think about it, a lot of what we're coding is just edges, right? Mm -hmm. Half the time that I'm spraying, I'm spraying something small. Only very seldom am I, you know, doing something big, and that's between the edges. So uh, I don't need a big pan pattern. I need control. Right. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask helped. you this. Yeah, let me ask you this. So, um. What is your opinion on who fine finishing is best suited for? So like, you know, I, I'm just thinking of my own situation, right? I'm thinking, you know, there's, um, there's customers out there. Um, they're expecting your level of finish. Maybe they don't understand the cost associated, but I mean, what would you say to, to the guys out there who are listening to this and they're not providing that level of finish that you're talking about do you think that it's something that they should learn how to do and invest the the time and energy or do they you know just not offer that service um should they be you know referring it out i just i would like to hear your opinion on that because i think you have a better feel for the difference in the um the finishes than i do right um, do, do you have, do you ha have that same sentiment that I do where I just feel like I don't really feel like I should be offering that because I feel like it's a disservice to my customers, but uh, what's your opinion on that? How do, how do you feel? What's your stance? Uh, you know, we've, we've really seen a, a lot of different, um, you know, areas of this, but like, for instance, you've got a lot of house flippers and you've got a lot of people who are doing just wham, bam stuff. And so there's there's a market for those guys that are just chucking a truck, blow and go. And I'm thankful for those folks. You know, I, I really am. Uh, but when you were talking about that, I think about with me, um, with me, I don't really ever want to ask for help. I'll figure it out myself. And that's been a downfall of mine. It took a long time to get to where I'm at in the finishing world because of that stubbornness, right? So sure. to be able to, uh, you know, streamline that learning process and take somebody that, that wants to invest themselves uh, and then being able to partner with them, not just for the two or three days, but throughout the, the rest of their career, uh, it's become, you know, my, my life's goal. Uh, um, I, I can't really down talk, other people that that just go at it and try to figure it out because that's how I do it. But I'll just say that if 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 you're trying to build a a, a reputable business and you're painting cabinets with um, non-industrial wood coatings, uh, then you should be prepared, you know, to uh, you know to to be fixing stuff, you know, if it if it didn't come out 
right, you know, if it doesn't last. Sure, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. So I, I think it just goes back to like creating those expectations, right? And don't uh, don't create an expectation that you can't um, live up to with a customer. I think that's a, a big learning point here. Do you think that it's profitable for, let's say, a company like me um, to try to go to the extent of you know hiring on guys, getting them trained in fine finishing, and offering the level of finish? Um, that you provide, or do you feel like it, it's honestly a really big undertaking um, and that it would be better suited for guys like me to just like kind of stay in our lane? Um, but what's your opinion on that? Well, looking back over the last three years, I've had a bunch of great companies. I mean, starting with SNL painting, they're, you know, one of the top rated painting companies in Missouri. Um, they started sending me their guys uh, and just mm -hmm. kind of, their head wrapped around. Um, so when somebody like you wants to open up a division that specializes in refinishing uh, and kind of taking the painting out of it, if you have somebody that has that gleam in their eye that wants it and, um, you know, you send them here for two days, when they came back, I, I think they would have a, a foundation that would allow them to to really grow, you know. And then the other thing is, they have access. Once you've trained with me, you have access, you know, for any of your problems. Like if you need help estimating, or if you have a job where you're not sure uh, which system to use, you know, you could send me pictures and I can help you with that. Um, you know, I have had, I would say 20 or 30 different guys that were sent here. Um, and I have a wonderful track record with them. I mean, we talk often, a lot of the guys you see that post in the groups, uh, they're some of my students and they've, they've went through a, a, a really big eye opening, you know, phase. Joe, uh, the guy that just left here, Joe Kelly, he explained to me that man in this, in this, uh, in his life, there wasn't nobody that really taught him anything. The, this, this industry that we're in, everybody's really tight lipped about sharing knowledge because you feel like you're training your competitors. Um, so being able to have a place where, you know, n there's nothing held back and that somebody wants your complete success. Uh, and I have pretty much all the answers to any problems that we could come across. And if I don't have the answers, I have a really good network of scientists and distributors and people uh, that can service us. So it's just it's just being a part of something. Um, you know, we, we did it for free for a long time, but being able to actually make a business out of it, um, it I'm really excited to be able to help. Yeah, that's guys. awesome. Yeah, you should. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you should be proud of what you've done and just the wisdom that you you have in that, that um, area yeah. of the industry. And, um, you know, I'm going to try and bring this to a, a close. And I just have a, a, I think a final question is what, let's say like myself or someone else who's listening to this, and they really want to uh, transform you know, their cabinet finishing process, maybe like you said, start a division where it's like, dedicated to the fine finishing for cabinets what kind of investment is that person looking at making into first off the training um secondly um you know the the equipment um what kind of could you kind of try as best as you could to um give somebody an expectation hey if you're going to completely um, tackle this, this is what you're going to need to invest monetarily for training, equipment, facility, you know, products, you know, all those different things as best as you could. Well, I know that's kind of off the top. Yeah, no problem. Uh, again, most everybody that's going to call me already has some spray equipment. They have some things and, and everything that I teach can be translated into whatever equipment that you have. So a lot of bootstrap guys, um, you know, we can work with them until they can afford, you know, the best equipment. But my two day training is 1750 per craftsman. Um, if there's two, uh, I have a $500 discount for the second one that's on the same team. Uh, okay. and then of course, you, you know, flights and, and, you know, Airbnb or whatever, uh, close to here, sure. but, um, the equipment, uh, uh of course you're going to need a, a good sander. You're going to get, need a good dust extractor. You're going to need air movers um, and you're going to need, you know, HVOP with a pressure pot. I mean, if, if I had to, you know, if, if I had a, you know, eight to $10,000 bill, I could outfit myself perfectly. Uh, if I needed to just get through it, 
I could probably do it, you know, half of that, you know, just, and, and be able to be sitting at a place where I would be ready to take on, you know, cabinet jobs. I, I am currently working on an online university that's going to mm-hmm. be, it's going to be awesome. And then I'll be able to do more virtual, but I'll be honest with you. It's going to take every video. It's going to take every influencer, every instructor that's on the internet and some hands-on. So I'm not worried about, you know, giving too much information out there for free because it's going to take it all. I mean, it really is. And just the service yeah. of somebody in your corner, um, you know, what, what do I do here? How do I keep from this becoming a disaster? Those are the, those are the calls that I love. <laughs> you know, I, how do I, how do I save myself on this? And I'll, I'll yeah. tell you, let me, let me roll back the curtain real quick, Brandon. I don't know if you remember this or not, excuse me. Um, 2020 you messaged me do you remember that uh yeah i do remember reaching out to you i don't remember what it was for <clears throat> okay so you uh you said and these these are the these are the messages that i love i get them all the time shane mm-hmm. i know you're most you cabinets would you be able to tell me why a ceiling would be flashing this bad and the satin finish any best way to fix it and i responded to you uh, about putting the N1 paint additive extender in there and then doing right. it in sense to where it would stay. Uh, but I, I love those. Those those make my day. Um, right. And then we talked about um, in March 2020, you said uh, you seem to provide one of the best finishes I've seen. I love to learn from you for my business down here. We spare our caddis, but I feel your product and finish comes out with a superior finish. Do you know what kind of smile I get? And how important <laughs> I feel when somebody like yourself reaches out to me. It's 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 amazing. I love that. And I was taught well. Yeah. I didn't invent any of these systems. I was taught uh, by guys. So to to have that um, purpose in life, um, it's 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 my love. It, it really is. So That's if awesome. I could help, yeah. That can I give a little quick testimony, real quick? When I was yeah, uh, for sure, I, absolutely. I was a part of the late 90s 2000s you have an injury i rode professional rodeo i rode bulls um so i had a lot of injuries um and of course you know we got on medication uh narcotic pain medication and that went and then they cut that off and it ended up going into other things well i got trapped like a lot of a lot of people do uh, about 18 years I, I ended up struggling with that and when i finally got to the end of my road and checked myself into intense uh treatment I was wrestling with the Lord and, and you know, as well as I do, when you come from an outer court experience in the wilderness prodigally, and you come back to your father's house, you have a different kind of spirit. I had a different spirit and I was really asking the Lord to help me. And, and after about six hours of wrestling with this, I felt the presence come into that hospital room. And again, I was detoxing off of a gram a day habit, which is a horrible, horrible experience. The spirit of God came in and all that left. And, and I heard in my spirit that I had two choices. And I'm like, two choices. He said, yeah, you can either continue to live a life of torment uh, and, and just heartache. And I was just like, oh, I don't want that. And he was like, or you can help people. And when he said that, I thought, well, I've always enjoyed, you know, pulling over and helping somebody change a tire. I didn't really know I had anything to help anybody with. Um, sure. And, and sure enough, as I went on my road to recovery i saw that um the 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 foundation of these finishing systems that i was taught at a very young age became very valuable and they became something that a lot of people sought after it didn't make no sense to me because where i come from it seems like everybody knows this stuff you know i mean my dad my uncles everybody's doing it so it's like normal for me uh but to be able to find out that there were a a lot of folks that didn't have that mentoring they didn't have a, a father like I did or an uncle or, a, you know, a boss or something like that. It, it made me, you know, really thankful. So I, I do believe that this, this, these whole cabinets and this, this industry is just an excuse for us to build the kingdom and get to be able to meet brothers like you and all the folks that are listening to this right now. I just want to, you know, let you know that I'm, I'm pulling for you. I'm praying for you. I want you to get the same results that I do because I love finishing a job. Um, and I say it all the time. I'm in it for the goosebumps, you know, at the end of the job, 
when you yeah. allow yourself to turn and you look at these Italian coatings all tight and, and beautiful and the customer's just like, wow, I had no idea. Most of them don't. Most of them don't have an idea how in-depth it is. So that being that said, if you're going to get into fine finishing and you're going to do this type of level of finishing, you owe it to yourself to create content. And I don't mean content to put on YouTube. I mean little snippets of every single process. And before you give an estimate out, you need to make sure that customer understands that, A, which one of these 14 steps do you not want me to do? <laughs> or which 14 steps do you want me to do for free? You know what I'm saying? But I got to do them all. I either got to charge you for them or do them for free. And it's like, I get it if you can't right. afford this. Understand that this is not your forever home. I get it, right? And I'll give you numbers to whoever. But if you really want something that's not going to become uh, an absolute mess, and we're going to actually even be able to sell it as an amenity in your home. So dealing with flippers and different people like that, uh, you've got a, a, a portion of them that that respect and know that if they put house paint on these cabinets, it's going to be a matter of time before they're just going to have to be replaced. So yeah. we actually come up with the these cabinets have been refinished with the Hyperbond system, and they have a lifetime warranty on them, and that helps them sell the home as well. So there are a lot yeah. of different ways that uh, we try to help bring value to the craftsman and all of his effort and hard work. But don't just think that somebody understands you know, all of that stuff, but if they can see it, uh, then that's wonderful. And I recommend working with a marketing company that can help you put together a landing page and, and again, be able to spoon feed all of this stuff. Uh, but if you'd like to learn it, um, you know, I'm here for you. And, and I, if you can't afford, you know, the tuition, I understand we do a lot of sponsorships. Um, we try to, um, uh, the ones I want to help Brandon, they, they can't afford to pay me. That's the ones I mm -hmm. want to help. You know what I'm saying? That's so, I, yeah, I think by uh, having guys that are in a little bit more of a successful place, they see that and they know uh, that, you know, they're they're making a choice that's going to help their their company by hiring me to be a consultant for them. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I think uh, just in you saying that, um, I love your heart. I love like what you want to do. And I, I tell people all the time, <clears throat> you know, um, as a believer, um, my business is, you know, this is my ministry. It's my platform to, um, to really be able to invest in people. Um, you know, in our mission statement, it says we do everything that we do because people matter. And, uh, you know, so that's kind of like the foundation of what I do. And I, I love that you want to help people who, you know, it's like almost like they don't, um, they, they can't help themselves. And, it, you know, you're, you're stepping out there and you're investing in somebody. And I just had a situation similar, you know, I had a guy, um, he's been messaging me for years and, you know, kind of like my thing that I'm good at is the marketing, you know, uh, sales, um, you know, I design my own websites and, you know, oh, this wow. guy reached out, this guy reached out to me and, um, you know, I, uh, completely redid his website for free. Um, you know, didn't, didn't, you know, ex I spent a lot of time, you know, um, okay. hours and hours of my time, you know, reaching out to him and getting the information and, it, and, um, you know, redesigning this guy's complete, uh, you know, website for him. And, and I didn't get anything for it, but what I got out of it was the joy of helping him, right. The joy of like, now he has a better chance with his business, right. Because now he has a website, he has a, I, um, you know, and that's important, you know, you, you gotta have a, in today's day and age, you gotta have a, a, a good website that converts for you. So anyway, I really appreciate, um, your heart and, uh, what you're doing there. And, um, I think that this is going to be a really valuable episode, um, for the guys who listen to this. I think there's a really, um, uh, good amount of principles that they can, uh, receive just on business, um, you know, kind of like ethics, morals, but also like the, the fine finishing. Um, I think it's going to be a great resource to people. Um, so I appreciate you taking your time to, to be on here. Um, I look forward to staying connected. And, um, you know, when I'm ready, like I told you, I've got like some really fine, like uh, stipulations that I have for myself to get to the point where we can offer fine finishing. Um, but when I'm ready that I would definitely reach out to you so that we can, uh, you know, have a plan in place to get guys there, train them and get them ready and really be able to deliver on the results we want to. But, um, any final words you want to leave the listeners with or. 
Well, I, I mean, I, I just, I feel a gratitude in my heart for guys like Dennis Rodriguez, Aaron Rodriguez, uh, uh, De- uh, uh, Dennis Rodriguez, excuse me, uh, Denny Jans, Christopher and Michael, uh, all of these guys that are influencers and instructors over the internet. I'm just thankful because it's pretty difficult to put yourself out there, you know, and sure. um, the way that I get around uh, putting the camera in my face is, is I, I have a saying that says the ones that I'm doing these videos for, they can read my mind anyway. So their discernment <laughs> that I'm not capping or that I'm not trying that I really, really care uh, for people. Mm-hmm. And I have a lot of ways to help folks, but I have a very good understanding on how to create a finish that's beautiful, that lasts a long time, especially now with this high gloss stuff coming out. Um, it's mm-hmm. just, it's just, you, you have to, everything has to be on purpose. And I would love to help anybody that needs it. Um, you can check out finefinish.com. That website is under construction right now, but it's going to have a whole bunch of uh, different things. And then you can always join my fine finish Institute group. It's a private group. Um, and that's the school of learning. And then I also have a uh, fine finish Institute gallery page. So you can check that out as well. Um, content organization is not my greatest uh, thing, <laughs> but with some people right now to really create some good content that's good to watch. And it's not just live videos with dogs barking in ambulances and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm working that's really good. hard to, to come out of, to get off the ladder, I guess you would say. There you go. To the classroom so that other guys can go. get on the right on. Yeah, that's right good on. stuff. Awesome, Shane. Well, thank you so much. And thank you to my listeners. Um, if you've enjoyed this episode, if you're watching on YouTube, please uh, like it, um, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification so you can see the next episodes that come. If you're watching on uh, Apple or Spotify, please rate and review the show. That'll really help me out. Um, and get this information in front of more people and share this episode with somebody. Um, if you would like to check the show notes, there will be uh, some resources down there that you can use. And uh, we'll see you next time on the next episode of the Off the Ladder podcast. Mm-hmm.